Okay, welcome everybody to our very first Google Demo Slam live on air. We have five slammers today uh, here in Fairfax County Public Schools. These are all school-based technology specialists or uh, instructional technology specialists that will be slamming today. Um, we're going to have three-minute slams, so each person will get exactly three minutes to demo an idea. Um, surrounding Google today, all the great ways that Google is transforming education. We will not be voting today at all. This is simply just for the love of learning and sharing. And I'm going to go ahead and let each person introduce themselves. And we'll start with you, Joan. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Joan Brown. I'm the SBED at Irving Middle School. And as you can tell, I'm in a TV studio. So I must be lit perfectly, right? <laughs> <laughs> you look great. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, my name is Brian Lachance. I am not. I'm the Espets at Keen Mill. I am not in a movie studio. I appear to be in the bathroom, but this is actually my office. The old nurse's office. So. All right, and go ahead, Dan. And the reason why is because they're so No, I'm not trying to Oh, Don't forget to unmute, Dan. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, I'm Dan Lindsay. I'm the aspects over at Lorton Station. And Tiffany. Hi, I'm Tiffany. Cherry Run Elementary. The aspects there. Hi. And lastly, Tim Stommer. Hello. This is Tim. I'm on the third floor above you. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started with Joan Brown today, and she's going to be slamming on the incredible start page. Joan, you let me know when you're ready, and I'll start the timer. Almost there. Hold on. All right, I'm going to start my screen share now. Are you ready for me to go? Because I'm in screen. Are you seeing it? I am ready okay. whenever you are. All right. I am so fortunate to be able to do the first slam because it's all about an incredible start. And that's what I'm about to show you. This is a typical Chrome page. I'm in Google Plus. But I have included an extension in Chrome called the Incredible Start page. And that's what this is. This is all of those Google bookmarks that you really can't see visually, except for that really small icon up at the top. You can see it a lot better. So what I'm going to do is start on my right-hand side of my screen and kind of explain to you what you're seeing on the Incredible Start page. Over on my right here are all of my bookmarks that are in the bookmark bar. What's so cool about the Incredible Start page is I can actually click and drag these around, and I can edit them right here. I'm also able to see all my apps that are loaded because of the tab here. So you can see I've loaded quite a few things into Chrome these days. And then also my most visited websites. So for the person who needs a little bit bigger icon or maybe you want to be able to organize, this is the way to go. A little bit further over here in this smaller box, these are my other bookmarks and I can choose to navigate any one of these folders and I can leave that one open over on this smaller um, window. And finally, over on the far left are the closed bookmarks, or I'm sorry, web pages that I've been at just recently. That's always when you whoops close it and you'd like to get back to it. But that is not all. This incredible start page does something else. Do you see these tiny little notepads up here? I can take little notes and then go directly to either emailing my note to somebody. So there's my email popping up. Or, if I want to, I can add it to my calendar right from the incredible start page. And that is the end of my incredible startup demo slam. Very nice. Thank you so much, Joan. All right. All right. So next up, and Joan, by the way, you did that in two minutes and ten seconds. It's awesome. Uh, <laughs> okay, next up we have Dan Lindsay, and he is showing how to choose your own Google adventure. 
Let me know when you're ready, Dan, and I'll start the, the uh, timer. All right. Um, can everybody hear me? You hear me, Tammy? We sure do. Loud and clear. You okay, can great. screen share when you're ready. Uh, screen share and then we'll share now. Okay, so um, when I was in the classroom, I used to do uh, Choose Your Own Adventures with my kids, and I did it using PowerPoint. Um, so what I wanted to do is I created it using Google Presentation. So I gave the kids a Google Doc, and this was a Choose Your Own Adventure. We had talked about the parts of a Choose Your Own Adventure, what they were looking for. Um, and this is a collaborative document that just one group would work in, so they would put in their characters, um, talk about their characteristics. They had boxes that they could fill in about those characters, um, the settings, um, different things like that, go through the story, the plot. Then after they had done these things, I gave them a Google, uh, just a template I made in uh, Google Drawing, and it just was an easy way to lay out. When I did this in the classroom, I used uh, pieces of paper for each of these boxes. Um, I guess I can't talk in my hands if you can't see that, so that's fine. Um, but each of these were a piece of paper. And so instead they did in Google Drawing, it would spread out. They're able to work on it with their partner, um, work on it at home. And when they're all done, instead of having a PowerPoint, we made, and I put a little kid example in here, we made a Google presentation. So once they were in here, they were able to drop in their pictures. Um, we were able to hyperlink it as well. So they could enter the story. And you have your warning page. Um, if you choose not to enter it, I had some kids that were uh, you know, a little interesting here. So it would, it would either you enter it or you don't. When you enter the story, you got to make your decisions. These are hyperlinks going there. Um, the only thing I'm missing is uh, voiceover with it. Um, but you could also download this and go back to PowerPoint. And you could add that in there as well. Um, but you go through and you make your decisions. If you don't succeed, it brings you back to the beginning. And you can just keep going through each time. So that is my slam about Choose Your Own Adventures. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dan. Um, next up, we have Brian Lachance, and silly me skipped over him. He was supposed to go second. Hey, I'm hey. so sorry, Brian. I had my post-it note uh, covering your name. So yeah, whenever yeah. you're ready, Brian, you can go ahead and load everything up and let me know, and we'll start the timer. Let me... There we go. Are we good? You are a okay. Okay. So you guys see my screen? We're good. We see it, but it's all black. Oh, oh. The black. The black. Now it's okay. 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 Um. Start timer. Start timer. Yep. You're good. Okay. Okay. What am I saying? What am I saying? A um. My demo slam is for a Google Chrome extension called Read and Write for Google Docs. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open a document I created today called Demo Slam. And at first, it just looks like a normal Google Doc. I've got a few highlights. Um, everything looks the same. But if you look up top here at this little green button, if you click on that, it brings down a toolbar for you. And again, this is from a Chrome extension. So there's a couple of things that this does. Um, first, I can leave my cursor at the beginning and click play, and you, may, you probably don't hear this, but it reads it aloud to me. Um, so it's nice. I just, I just pulled this text out of uh, Wikipedia, Abraham Lincoln. I just tossed it in here. And so it can read it to me. Um, I can also stop that. I can also click on a word and choose translate. It will translate it into Spanish for me. Uh, I can mess with the settings. I can translate it into French or Spanish. I can change the voice, so I can have it sound like Australian, Spanish, etc. Um, but the real power with this is the highlighting feature. So I highlighted these five words. I just picked five random words and I highlighted them. And over here is a button called Collect Highlights or Vocabulary. If I click Vocabulary, what it does over here, you see, it says a new document container vocabulary list is being created. And it takes about 
30, 45 seconds. Um, and I can still go back and edit this while I'm waiting for that. But what's going to happen is a new document's going to pop up that has these words, highlighted words, defined for me, as well as with pictures. Um, so here it comes up. So just by highlighting words in my document, I can create a vocabulary list. Um, what else can I do? I can highlight different things in different colors. So let's say I wanted this in blue. I can also choose to collect my highlights. Let's see, I just want those two colors. And again, it brings up a, a new document for me. It just collects my highlights. So here's a vocab list. Um, the unfortunate thing about this tool is I noticed I only have 16 days left of my premium features. So the reading it to me, um, as well as translating, is free forever. However, these fun highlighting tools and collecting my vocabulary are only free for 30 days, and, I, and then it's a subscription fee. I didn't find that out until after I downloaded it. But I think it might be useful for you know, ESOL students, special ed students, depending upon you know, what um, your admin wants to spend money on. But I think it's a great tool. Again, similar to the tools you have here um, with research, I can click on Lincoln, click this button, this is Fact Finder, and it opens up a Google search for me. Um, let's see. Uh, and Brian, you are out of time. Right, right. <laughs> but you got through almost everything, and it yep, was great. Yep. Thank you. And uh, just as a side note, um, if you all are interested in looking at that, you definitely want to get in touch with us so we can put that through the approval process and make it official. Thanks for bringing that uh, new tool to us, Brian. No problem. No problem. All right. Next up, we've got Tiffany Duncan. So, Tiffany, when you are ready, let me know, and I'll start the timer. Hello. Okay, I hear you, Tiff. Let me know when you're ready to screen share. Okay. When you're ready. Didn't I do one? I think I did. Hold on. Have you on screen? Can you see my screen? No, you didn't. Do it again. We see you. We don't see your screen, though. Don't show it. Show it. Sorry. Sorry. Um, click on your own name down on the bottom. Make sure that you click on your own picture. Now you're screen sharing. Okay. Okay. You're still clicked on me though. Okay. Oh, uh, Okay. 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 You know, I know. I think it's All right. Go back. This one. We said there would be some laughs today. No. <laughs> There you go. You got it. Oh, you can see it? Yes. Okay. Do you want me to start? Yep, when you're okay. ready. Okay. All right, ready. Um, 
Okay, so I have this newspaper template that I want my students to um, to use in order to create their own newspaper um, and to write, you know, their own articles and insert their own pictures and citations and everything. Um, and I want to give it to them through Google Apps, but as we know, when we do that, they have to make a copy of it, and it takes it's time consuming. So um, instead of going through all that, I'm just going to use Doctopus to give each person their own copy of the template. Um, for the project. So all I have to do is put their names and then their email address and then I have to add the script Doctopus um, from the script gallery and then I just set it up um, the way that I want it to you know send them their assignment and then I run it and if I click on Tammy I can see that Tammy got the newspaper and she didn't do the assignment, so we might have to give her a one. But um, so that's how that works. And then I can actually even give each person a grade, and I can give them written feedback. And once I give them the grade and the written feedback, I can go back into Doctopus, and I can send a personalized email to the students with, you know, my teacher feedback, um, and then a little note. And I can say, you know, dear name, which would, you know, put their name in there, and just let them know that I've looked at their assignment and I've given them a grade, and um, and then I just set, save and send the emails, and it emails every student. Um, if you want to get really even more complicated, you can add a rubric by using attached rubric. Um, so you would have to first create a rubric um, that looks something like this. And once you've created the rubric, right. then yeah. from within one minute. The spreadsheet. And by the way, rub uh, Gubric only works if you have, um, if you're using Doctopus first. It doesn't. Gubric doesn't work on its own. So you have to have Doctopus in order to use Gubric. But you don't have to have Gubric to use Doctopus. <laughs> um, so anyway, so you would click on attach the Gubric. And then you choose, you would have to have it pre-made so that you can select which one you want. So right here you can see that I have my newspaper rubric um, and this hilarious thing with the eye looking around. Um, Andrew Stillman is hilarious. But anyway, so that you would set it up like that and you would attach it to the assignment and then you would grade um, based on the rubric and then your scores would come up here and you could, and I've already emailed them with this score so I can't really show you how that would work or how that would look, but basically they would get a copy of the rubric. And that's it. Thank you very much, Tiffany. That was great. All right, next up is Tim Stommer. And Tim will be showing us GeoGuessr and GeoSetter. So Tim, when you're ready, let me know. Okay, let's see if I can make this work here. How's that? Are we, um, are, we, are we seeing things? It's still trying to pull it in. We still see your uh, profile picture. All right, let's see if I what I did wrong here. It does show that you are screen sharing. Now it doesn't. Now it shows that you're screen sharing. And it's like it's trying to pull you in, but we it keeps switching back to your profile picture. Uh, that's not good. All right. All right hold on a second. Okay. While Tim's getting set up, I wanted to let all of you that are tuned in and watching know that you can come back and. Uh, if you go into our information center, into our agenda page for today, February 25th, there is a spreadsheet with all of the presenters' names and their topics. So if you wanted more information, you could get in touch with those folks. And again, that's on our ESSBIT's ECT agenda page for today. There's a link to the spreadsheet with the names and topics from all the slams happening this week. And it looks like Tim is back up and ready to roll. So when you're ready, Tim, let me know. All right, All right let's go with this. Go, with this. go All ahead. Right. Uh, this is uh, in the category of a now for something completely different because uh, this has nothing to do with Google Drive. 
but it is part of Google, and that is Street View. Many of you have seen Street View before, and basically Street View is Google sending their cameras all over the world to get a look at uh, what's happening at the street level. Well, this is GeoGuessr, and what this does is it's a game, basically, and it drops you into a random Street View location. And your job is simply to tell us, where are you? Well, you can look around. You can see that you have the same little paths here, so you can go uh, along the way. And you just make a, basically make a guess by dropping a pin on the map up here. And to me, that looks like some place in New England, so I'm just going to drop a pin right there on there. And I say, OK, that's fine. If I, do, I can change this pin at this point. but when I click make a guess, it shows me that I was off slightly. I said I was in New England. They said, no, you're in southern Alaska. OK, well, so I got 1,569 points for that. All right, so now I'm in a new location here. So I have to go through, and I have to choose where this is. I know it's on a coast somewhere. And the, the, I think this particular um, site is really good for warm-ups because uh, now you're getting the kids to do some analytical thinking. There's a little bit of science tossed in here, because you might ask, OK, what biome am I in? Um, you might uh, you know, say, OK, what clues do you see as to where we might be? Are there any signs that might tell you that we're in a different country? Uh, and I'm just going to pick randomly and say we're in South America. That's probably wrong, but let's uh, say, OK, sorry, we were in Portugal. Way off. Anyway, you do that five times, and it will it you, then gives you a, a final score, and it gives you a new game. Um, if you want a little bit more of a challenge uh, up here, you can set a time limit on it so that you have a certain number of minutes and seconds to uh, to finish the uh, the challenge. Um, to go with GeoGuessr, there's another site called GeoSetter, which allows which allow you to create thirty seconds. Own I'm, I'm, I've got a timer here, too. Uh, it allows you to set up your own uh, GeoGuessr uh, uh, games. So this simply allows you to come in here, drop your pin where you want to, to be, and it shows you, the, the blue shows you where uh, the uh, Street View cars have been. So you drop your pins wherever you want it to be, and you do that five times, or you can paste in the latitude and longitude up here. And that's GeoGuessr and GeoSetter. All right. Thank you very much, Tim. And he did that with about three seconds to spare. So that wraps it up for today. That I is the, <laughs> that's the end of our slams. We'll be back again on Wednesday, or I'm sorry, on Thursday and Friday of this week at 1:15. If you'd like to join us for some more slams, and thanks to all of our presenters today, you guys were great.